Now that we have made the projective algebraic sets into pre-varieties, we will look at some morphisms between them and use this finally to show that these pre-varieties are in fact varieties. But let's start by just looking at some morphisms. And the morphisms we will look at are morphisms defined by homogeneous polynomials. So take a projective algebraic set X. Then if you have polynomials F0 to Fm that are homogeneous of the same degree D, then you get a morphism of pre-varieties from the set of all points in X where these polynomials do not jointly vanish to Pm. Note that Pm, uh, the M here is the number of polynomials plus one, it might be different from n, and the way you get the map is that you map x to f0 of x up until fm of x. First of all, note that this map is well defined, so we need to uh, show that if we represent x by a different affine point lambda x, we will get the same image. But this is the case because this lambda will manifest itself as lambda to the power d in all coordinates. And since all polynomials are homogeneous of the same degree, we will just get a factor of lambda to the power d throughout that gives us the same point. So this is well defined. And to show that this is a morphism, it is enough to show that it is a morphism on an open cover because of the gluing property of morphisms that you might want to go back and look at when we looked at pre-varieties. So because of the gluing property, it is enough to look on an open cover. WI of our W and W is the name I will give for this domain. And so these, the, what will WI be? Well, I will take WI to be the set of all X in W such that FI of X is not zero. Why did I take that? Well, this is because wi is going to be the pre-image of ui. Remember the sets ui, these are the sets of all y in um, pm, such that yi is different from zero. And on these wi, what does this f look like? Well, using affine coordinates, so for example, on uh, uh, on, on W0, I get these affine coordinates by removing the zero of coordinate and dividing by it throughout. So using affine coordinates, f on wi will have the following shape. It will map a point x to the point, well, to, to the point uh, f0 of x divided by fi of x up until fm of x divided by fi of x. And so these go through all indices that are different from i. So now I get a map from the affine um, variety wi to the affine variety ui that in the coordinates of these affine varieties is given in this way. Each coordinate here is a regular function on this affine variety. So this is indeed a morphism 
Uh, so these are regular functions. So this is indeed a morphism uh, of affine varieties, because from before we know that a morphism of affine varieties is exactly a map where the uh, uh, coordinate functions are regular. But then this means that f on wi, this restriction is a morphism, and therefore by the glowing property, all of f is a morphism. And this concludes the proof. Let us look at some examples of this. So let's look at projective automorphisms of Pm. So if you take a matrix, A, an invertible, uh, n plus 1 times n plus 1 matrix, then of course you get a map from affine space to itself, mapping x to a x. And this is, if you write out exactly what matrix multiplication is, it's an exercise from linear algebra. If I number my indices in a reasonable way, this is going to be the outcome. And so these coordinate maps are homogeneous maps of degree one. So this defines a map Pn to Pn with uh, inverse x maps to a to the power uh, minus one, the inverse of a. And this is a morphism of variety. So this is in fact a morphism by the previous proposition. Why is that? Well, these are homogeneous polynomials of the same degree. And if we call these F0 to Fn, then Pn mod the set, the vanishing set, of all these fi. This is just pn. These cannot all vanish simultaneously because that would mean that the uh, matrix A, its columns um, can combine linearly to zero non-trivially. And that's not possible because A is invertible. So we get, we are in the situation of the previous morphism and we do indeed get a morphism. In fact, so an isomorphism of Pn with itself, an automorphism, and one can show that any automorphism of Pn is of this form, but we will not delve into that. We will look at a different example. So uh, it is the projection from a point A onto a linear subspace. So a linear subspace um, is what one usually calls a space so subspace of Pn of the form f v of f1 to fr, where these are homogeneous of degree 1. So as the polynomials we had in the previous example. And the idea is that I want to get some stereographic projection from a point A to some linear subspace of dimension n minus 1. So this is p n minus 1. And I want to achieve this by mapping a point x to the intersection of the line um, f of, uh, through x and a with uh, p n minus 1. So uh, what I'm doing here, I am viewing all of this inside a to the power n plus 1. It's easier to view it in, in this way. And so uh, if I take as my a the point 1, 0, 0, and as my l the vanishing set of x0, then I want to send a point x0, xn, to 
the same point, so zero, but forget uh, setting the first coordinate equal to zero. So the usual, what you would expect from a projection. And so I identify this with x1 to xn as a point in Pn plus one. And you can check that if you look in a fine space, well, this is exactly the intersection. I mean, it's, it's clear that this point is the intersection of the line through A and X with this projective space. And I can do this in general. I can, so this is, this will give me a map from P N minus A to P N minus one. And in general, I can do this for any A in P N and any N minus one. So any P N minus one inside P N not containing A. And indeed, if you think about it, up to a projective automorphism, you can always reduce to this specific situation. Because in AN plus one, there is always an invertible linear map taking your N minus one dimensional subspace to um, this PN plus one and A to this point one, zero, zero, and so on. 